Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Uh, today I'm going to address something I've been seeing a little bit of on different forms and stuff online, and that's what happens if a plant that's supposed to be dormant starts growing during dormancy. So, um, over here, these are all Calia Rex, seedlings, siblings. Uh, they are in plastic pots. And that's the reason they're all here together is because the uh, fan blows right down here. And I've had plants in plastic pots rot in the winter because the, the plastic holds more moisture. So I put them under the fan here and they seem to be drying out really well every day. And so I'm actually watering these a little bit more than I'm watering the other plants. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but I am. And, and what seems to have happened is because I'm watering them a little bit more, they uh, three of them have popped new growths now this one stopped this one started back in November but this little guy got a new growth started there and then this one's really a surprise because this plant actually bloomed in August and it's broken a bud and started growing so here's here's my here's my way of addressing this I, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do anything different than I've been doing like I said, I've been watering these plants a little bit more because they get really, really dry every day. Um, fertilizer levels for me, um, I know in my Catlia Rex video I said zero fertilizer in the winter. I I do add a tiny, tiny amount of Kalite, and I'm talking like a twentieth of a teaspoon, like just a few little granules, just to mineralize the, the distilled water. But because these guys are getting water more often, maybe that's still enough nitrogen to tell them, hey, maybe we should start growing. So I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing. I am not going to start treating these plants as if it were growing season. I'm not going to up the fertilizer. I'm not going to water more. I'm going to do exactly what I was doing. Here's what I expect. From what I've seen growing these plants, any kind of a growth that comes out during grow during uh, the dry season is not going to be a blooming growth, and it's not even going to be that big. It's going to be kind of a little growth. Uh, to give you an example, this growth on this plant came out during dry season last year. You can see it's a little skinnier, a leaf is smaller, and that's fine. An extra, another bulb never hurts the plant. Now, does it take energy away from what could potentially be blooms in the spring or in the summer? Maybe, could. But whatever, I'm not going to try to force the plants to do things they don't want to do, but I'm also not going to change my seasonal regimen just for a few rebels. So these plants obviously feel comfortable enough to put, start putting out some new growth. I say, fine, new leaf, new bulb, always a good thing. Will it delay blooming on these plants another year? It might, I don't know. Or maybe they'll only put out one or two flowers. doesn't matter to me. As long as the plant's healthy, I'm going to stick to my growing se or my dry season regimen of watering less often, much, 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 much less fertilizer than I use during the growing season, and we'll see what happens. So I'll, I'll keep you updated on those. Uh, I would expect those growths are going to be, you know, probably three months in, ma in maturing. Uh, so we'll see. Probably in February we'll, we'll have some mature growths completing back. I, w I wouldn't expect them to be very big. Alright, another plant that's just completely out of season. This is Catlia Maxima. Everything I read about Maxima says it grows in the spring and summer and it blooms in the fall and winter. Well, this plant grows in the fall, winter, and blooms in the spring and summer. So, it came from Seattle Orchid. I don't think that Seattle is in the southern hemisphere, so I don't think that these plants are coming from a different growing environment. I, I don't know though. But uh, I am really, really happy at the size and the shape of the new growth. Just, just pristine. I mean, love that. Lo look how just nice and solid those new growths are. Yes, that is a win. So, next year I will not spray the blooms with Phyton 27 or insecticide or whatever it was, like I did this year, and hopefully we'll get 
two really nice displays off those two spikes. All right, I repotted a couple seedlings. They got graduated up to the next pot size. This is the Cattleya labiata, semi-alba from Carter and Holmes. You can see it is putting out a really nice new leaf there. I repotted it into an air cone pot. Not my favorite choice for Cattleyas, but I'm gonna try to be really careful and not overwater it. So hopefully it will be able to put at least two, hopefully maybe even three new growths out while in this pot. And then if we go over here, we can look at Cattleya Triani AC Burridge. I feel like I'm very shaky today. Um, and AC Burridge, you can see is putting out this nice, this is not AC Burridge, this is Cashins, my bad. Putting out a really nice new growth on that. Roots emerging at the bottom, I figured, well, it's now or never. So I went ahead, repotted it, and also in an air cone pot, also in bark with some granite rocks in the bottom just to stabilize it. So hopefully those are good for at least two, three more growths. Uh, Calia Jose Marti putting out roots like crazy. Tiny little shadow in the bottom of this sheath, just a tiny one, but it is something. Keeping an eye on it, hopefully we're going to see something come out soon. Bulbophyllum crocium. I wonder if you can see this. There is, yep, yeah, right here, there is a little spike coming up. And then there are a couple more. There's one right there at the tip of my fingernail there. And there's another one coming up. I really, really, really hope they make it all the way to blooming this is a super cool little bulbo pretty pretty rare very uncommon um super excited to have it and hopefully we'll get some really cool little blooms off of it my uh fungus gnat trap is covered in fungus gnats i still see some i don't see as many flying around but they're still around but the other day I was looking in here and I was like, hmm, there really are noticeably fewer. So hopefully the fungus gnat eating mites and the gnat trap are all working in conjunction to decrease the numbers. When I moved my plants from the greenhouse to this tent, I did have fungus gnats for a little while and then they all disappeared. In the greenhouse, there were tiny little spiders that would set up residence in plant pots and eat fungus gnats and I noticed the other day I still have a couple of those teen I mean they're tiny little spiders like I don't know they're like five millimeters long they're tiny but they eat fungus gnats they set up little webs like down in the pots where you don't ever ever even see them but I've seen a couple so I've got mites I've got spiders and I've got uh gnat trap all working against the fungus gnats so who knows they might disappear again all right all right all right let's look at the catacetums this is Mormodia jumbo world with its biggest bulb ever and its most floriferous spikes ever 23 on the longer spike 17 on the shorter spike for a total of 40 and we are getting close this top blooms definitely look like they are getting to the point where they want to bloom soon. I would say two weeks probably still before we start seeing buds crack open on that. However, if you look behind Jumbo World, you will see Cloesia Rebecca Northern has actually popped open a couple of flowers. So instead of trying to get around in the tent, I'm going to take her out and we'll have a look at her. All right, here she is, the famous Rebecca Northern with a couple flowers open. Now, I these started opening on Friday. Today is Sunday. And um, I have already been able to detect fragrance out of one of these flowers, actually a couple of them. And we don't want to focus, of course. 
And I gotta be honest, I, if the flowers don't open up any more than this, I'm a little disappointed. I really was expecting or hoping that the flowers would be more open than this. But look at that really nice deep yellow down in the throat with red streaks. Kind of a pinkish flower, green stripes, green column. Again, I'm hopeful that it's going to continue to open. Because uh, I really would be kind of disappointed if that's, if this is all we got. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about fragrance. I told you last week I was going to try to be better at describing fragrance. So, first of all, I would, you know, if we go from gen general to more specific, it's a nice fragrance. But it, it really surprised me. It is not at all what I was expecting. And um, it, it is a sharp fragrance. When I smell, it hits you right between the eyes. And it first thing that I kind of thought of was it reminded me of some kind of like a lemon scented cleaner. So it's got that. It's got definitely kind of a lemony scent, but it's also got a little hint of menthol and whatever it is that are in those cleaners that give them that, just that fresh and almost a little, I mean, it's just hard to describe as chemically, a little bit chemical, but when you inhale, you, you your, your sinuses kind of open up a little bit. Um, so yeah, sharp is definitely a good word. I would not say that it was a particularly sweet fragrance. I wouldn't say sweet. Um, so that's that's my evaluation. Overall, it's pleasant. Lemony, lemon scented cleaner, hint of menthol. Maybe it, I've heard someone say grapefruit and cinnamon. I'm not getting that at all from this plant, but I mean, I did go ahead and sniff the cinnamon out of my spice cabinet and maybe a teeny tiny little hint of cinnamon in the background somewhere but up front like I said it's a sharp lemony uh, slightly menthol-y cleaner-ish fragrance pretty cool alright guys well that is all for today I appreciate you stopping by I will talk to you next time right here on My Green Pets have a great week see ya